This confer oh, this conference will now be recorded. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I want to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today, this afternoon. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but it's it's kind of rainy and dreary here. Um, I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. I'm really happy to have you all on the call today. This is kind of a, uh, we've been trying to take cues on what we want to talk about from different um, people who are asking questions, both on listservs and talking to us about things that they're interested in learning more about or just want to share with people what they're thinking about. So today is one of those situations where we had people who were interested in learning more about lockers and not having that much um, experience or uh, knowledge about lockers. I did a little bit of reading and reached out to some people who know, know a lot more about it than I do. So we're happy to have them on the call too. Library lockers are not really real completely new, but um, they've been around, I think, since about 2014, 2015 at libraries, um, you know, with specialty uh, vendors creating products to sell, um, and also people being sort of, you know, um, innovative and in using lockers that are already existing, I guess you would say. So uh, it's it'll be fun to hear what other people are doing and what they're thinking about doing. I think that lockers in particular have become probably more prevalent as, uh, you know, we, we went through last year with COVID and uh, what, you know, how are we going to serve our communities and keep our staff safe and keep materials, you know, uh, quarantined and so on. So this is one area that I think some people have really explored and other people may, you know, just be waiting to see what others are doing. I just want to remind you that the DLIS discussions are really for you all. Uh, we are here to listen to you and to help you in any way we can, but really it's a venue for y'all to share with each other. And I certainly hope that you feel comfortable in doing so. Uh, we do have, like I said, a topic that we sort of focus on, but if there are other issues that you'd like to bring up, please do. I mean, we're we're just here for you, so I want you to, to feel comfortable in doing so. Of course, I have to mention a few housekeeping items before we get started, um, which you have probably heard five zillion times since last year, but uh, we've muted everyone at this point, but once the discussion begins, we'll unmute everyone. So if you would mute yourselves until you're ready to talk, um, that would be great because then, you know, I don't know, I think most of us are back at, at uh, the office, but in the event that you have a library cat or <laughs> dog, as the case may be, um, we, we, we like them, but we want to hear you. <laughs> um, if you don't have a mic, chat is available and we would love to, we'll be watching chat and monitoring that and reading uh, sharing what's in chat so that uh, those people who are calling in uh, will know what the questions are too or what the comments are. Um, if you get dropped for some reason, uh, and of course that does happen on occasion, uh, or you're ha having bandwidth issues, uh, please turn off your webcam if you have one on uh, and um, until you want to speak. And you of course can speak um, and share with the group without your webcam on, but we really, we love seeing you as well as hearing you. So that's up to you, of course. This session will be recorded, as I think you probably noted at the beginning of this, and uh, made available on our YouTube channel uh, for, for you to refer to later if you'd like, and for those who uh, were not able to join us today. Uh, like I said, I like to invite staff from a, a, a few libraries in Florida to talk about what our topic is uh, the day because you're obviously going to benefit more listening to them and, and asking them questions um, as they 
are on their quest or their adventure in library locker land. <laughs> and um, so, uh, and also in learning what sort of the, some of the issues were with um, making decisions about purchasing and locating lockers and patron feedback and that sort of thing. Uh, so today it gives me great pleasure to introduce Andy Figert with Newport Ritchie Public Library and Tina Peak from Lake Wales Public Library to talk about their experiences. Uh, and I really, we want to hear from you all. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to just, just jump right in. Um, so we'll get started. I think what I would like to ask first of all is what made you decide to to look into lockers, to buy lockers, um, to offer them either at your library or somewhere else in your community? Either one of you can just jump right in. <laughs> I, I, I would not be telling the truth if I didn't say COVID and the closure we had started my investigation of them um, we were closed from March until November and by that time it became pretty evident that people who were taking advantage of doorside service intended to, to continue it um, they did not even when we opened they expressed that at that point there was no vaccine and people were still frightened so um, but I actually did the research and went to city commission with the request to purchase in July of 2020. We have library impact fees in Lake Wales, so I was able to make the case that it did qualify for library impact fee purchase. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, went out for three bids and the manufacturing, Andy, I don't know if you found this, it's, it's quite a lengthy period of time from the time you say, Here's the first half of the check until you actually they're manufactured and custom made for you. So that was that was what. But we also have a um, satellite fire station in the north area of our community that is very fast. That area is very fast growing. And I'd already been investigating some possibilities for self-service out there before prior to um, pandemic. So uh -huh. that's a good tip. Interesting. Yeah. Andy? Uh, I would just echo what Tina mentioned that we initially did this as a reaction to the pandemic because our goal is to give access of library resources to people. And so we thought, well, how can we do this in a way that also does not endanger them? How can we increase access but not endanger our community members? So um, we did some creative thinking with the funding that was available, and this is uh, our answer to, to those challenges. Wonderful. So it sounds to me like y'all had a common purpose, obviously, but uh, perhaps different funding sources or funds available to you to pursue what you were trying to do, which was to continue to be connected to your library or to your community with the resources that you're offering them. So that, that's very interesting. So what vendors or where did you look and how did you get started on, you know, I mean, obviously cost is a factor um, maybe turnaround was a factor. I, I, I don't know what 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 was what were the big factors for you both? Well, I can mention that with our funding, we had uh, we had already put into our budget to purchase some lockers, but they were for staff to replace some old dented awful lockers that have been used for I think up uh, upwards of 30 years. Oh wow. <laughs> Staff needed some new lockers and then COVID happened um, and and we thought well you know staff uh, many of our staff are at home so what can we use instead that we have on hand to truly really make this happen and actually we hadn't ordered the lockers yet but we ordered them from home depot for uh -huh. 1075 dollars 
$55 for shipping and they delivered it with a semi truck that parked uh, on Main Street. They <laughs> delivered a big pallet, pushed it into the library and we unwrapped it and, um, and just went from there. And I did send Casey a picture yeah. Of the uh, of the lockers, um, and then we you know labeled them and we ordered some locks to put on them, and I'll just say that the locks were I've got the name of them here uh, long shalco combination padlocks from mfssupply.com. So we ordered 18 locks uh -huh. for 49 each. And the great thing about these locks is that you can set the combination of them. So we set, every time they would be used, we would set them to uh, the last four digits of the library member's library account um, so that it was just a secondary way that we could ensure that the right user is actually accessing those materials. So that worked out pretty nicely with oh. that. Casey, do you want to pull those? Would you mind pulling those uh, images up that that uh, Andy shared with us? Okay. And maybe while, she, while she's doing that, I'll just say that they are weather resistant. Uh huh. Uh, they are very sturdy. Um, we we do sanitize them in between each use, um, and we place them outside of the front doors of the library. So there is a walkway that kind of shields them from oh. the Florida weather too. So that's <laughs> really helpful. Uh, yes, interesting. Well, this is very clever. So it's, it was good to have them very close by since you were you know, doing a lot of this or all of this manually. Yes, absolutely. And they're right outside the front doors of the library. So even though the library was closed for 10 weeks during COVID, we still, all of our librarians were working on site inside the building during this time. So we found that there were a few challenges along the way and we ended up putting the library phone number on each one of those labels so that someone could knock on the glass door and we could come out and help or they could call the library and we could come out and help but we found that really we only had to ask um, twice to have the locks popped mm -hmm. and we think that that you know it could have been a combination of different things but we think that um, sometimes people had challenges either using the lock or if they were wearing gloves, sometimes the gloves would get in the way when they were trying to put in the combination of the lock. Um, and other times, I think that maybe they just, um, maybe they reset the code on the lock, uh -huh. not knowing, you know, what the how what the steps were. They just kind of did it, you know, being unaware. And so we'd have to have the, the locks popped. But we found that during this time that when people would take out their materials, many times they would return them the same way. So that was kind of, um, that was unexpected, but it, it was wonderful too. It worked out fine. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you. Tina, what was your experience? Well, we, we took a little different spin. We, I actually got quotes from two um, library specific vendors um, and then one vendor that wasn't library specific, but they had said they had experience with libraries. So ours are actually connected to our ILS. And oh. we went with um, International Library Services, which used to be Pick Inc, I believe is what it used to be. And I got a quote also from um, Envisionware. And then the third quote was again from a non-library vendor. Um, our system is, is again tied to our ILS system and we have a, um, a pickup location. I'm in a library cooperative. I'm in the Polk County Library Cooperative. So we're all independent 
public municipal public libraries who have a cooperative agreement. So in we use Circe Dynex, and in that system, you know, as many of you are aware of, you can ch um, check your you can choose a, a pickup location. Um, and so we added a location called Lake Wales Lockers. And just like when you receive transits in, when we scan in something, we'll get a transit slip to Lake Wales Lockers. And um, it it's notifies the patron, I, whatever their choice of notification is, whether it's text, email, voicemail, that they have an item in the locker. The lockers don't have numbers and they don't have locks on the outside. So the patron comes to the front of the lockers and um, either manually enters their library card number in or there is a barcode scanner they can scan. And once the um, locker is identified, if the door pops open automatically and when the door pops open, it's a self checkout um, it, at that point with this system. Um, we oh. went, I can ask you then. So when you when the door opens, does that mean it's automatically checked out? Yes. The items are to the okay. Yes, yes it, it treats it like a like a self checkout station. Um, so they remain they can remain in the lockers up to the five days we have set for holds expirations, and then at that point, um, I wish I should have sent the. We have a there, and, and I wanted to say, and I, I don't know, Andy, if you have the same experience with this, but because we're, um, because it's tied to our ILS system and so forth, we only have a limited number of staff who actually manage the um, the loading of the lockers and, and watching the holds and so forth. Um, we quickly found out. I will tell a funny, funny story on one of my employees with with this locker system this you can um we had to create a separate patron for lake wells lockers so you check an item out if tina peak has an item she wants to put in the locker it's checked out a hold slip is generated and then they go over to a computerized map of the lockers and they can tell what lockers are open and it has a map of what are ada compliant lockers and and all different sizes we have a 20 locker bank and so they select the locker, they're going to put the patron's um, materials in. And then the one thing we've found is a little difficult is they have to manually enter the patron ID number, which is quite a number of digits. And we've had some mistakes along the way with that, but um, it, it's people can get multiple items you know consecutive days and you just keep loading their items to the locker they've already um, they already occupy and at some point sometimes the locker will turn the locker map will turn yellow when the particular locker has an expired item in it so we've manipulated the receipt for instance if I had a, a five items in a locker and two of them expired today, then I could tell, staff could go out and tell which two items they needed to pull out as an expired hold. But um, it's it's worked well. Our, we have, they, I will, I can't say enough good about the tech support team at, um, at International Library Services. They, we have one gentleman, his name is Bill McClendon, um, very responsive. Um, a couple of times since we've gone live with them, they, people's barcode numbers who just won't scan when they go to approach and and invariably he can go right in and there's been a couple of cases where Microsoft needed to run an update so um, but the we we liked what Envision Wear offered but it had to be indoors and we didn't have the capacity at this library to have an indoors pickup spot after hours um, so we had it there they were more pricey in some ways, um, but they also, that was a requirement, which I understand now from Envision where they are um, moving away from that and creating weatherproof lockers. But um, we had a slight overhang and then um, when they came to install it, they felt like we needed a little more and we had a local canvas awning company um, do a, a full, 
coverage of everything. They were concerned, of course, about the computer equipment that's inside because there is a tablet um, and a and computer network that goes with it. But um, it's it's really been most days at least half of the lockers are filled. Um, it's been very popular. Um, I can see weekends when people are anticipating, you know, not arriving till after we close on a Saturday, that they're putting stuff on hold and loading those lockers come by when we're after hours. So. Uh -huh. so, so did they, so you purchased the lockers, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't, we are not renting them. And so no. the, the, I'm assuming the company had certain requirements in order to um, warranty the lockers or how? well we had to have a um we had to have an ac outlet a 110 outlet installed outdoors where they were going to be um installed and we had to have a, a wired internet connection it also required a sip license for that from their end which luckily polk county library cooperative had handled for us through cersei dynex um, and so we were all ready for them and, and the, again i went to commission with it in july of 2020 and we signed off all the paperwork and put the deposit down and it was the end of october before the manufacturing process was had started um, or had completed and we had one of those wannabe hurricanes in november that acted like it was going to be something and then it wasn't but that was the day they sent the two technicians to install it and oh gosh <laughs> that was when they kind of freaked out about the depth of our awning and he said look i'm not comfortable so we wrapped it they installed it we wrapped it in plastic I ordered an awning and we went live with them at the end of December. So we we're just about seven months into them. Uh-huh. Interesting. So yeah. you ordered them and so how quickly did you get yours, Tina, once you ordered them? Um, it was July to October, so about four months. Uh-huh. And Andy, what and yours was yours was probably a lot quicker. <laughs> It was about a week and a half maybe, or something like that. I think I actually waited longer to get the the locks. But again, yours is shiny and it has all the bells and whistles <laughs> and it does these amazing things. And uh, well, it's like it's like custom ordering a car. You get to pick the paint color and and the you know the finish and right. We, we had a local sign maker, uh, you know, a local marketing company do i I'd, I'd love to have covered it with the pretty graphics you see online and all but we went with just a real simple sign that cover we have our logo and the city of lake wales logo on one each on the um on the exterior doors then we have a real simple and street three-step instructions you know um place your hold to lake wales lockers you know scan your and it's three steps and then at the bottom for the folks who use them after hours. If you have problems, please call right now and leave us a message and we'll, you know, so we can investigate. And we've not really had any issues. I, I will say, and I don't know if you agree, Andy, this experience has, um, I'm ready to move forward with a non-staffed library in this North Corridor, really. I think we could do um, a, a a drop off a, a locker system and probably some kind of vending machine system where we could have a limited number of items out there and um, it could be open 24 7. We have a security camera over the front door and that's where they're located so that was um, and they also this system has its own security camera. Wow. It comes with a, a little eye so it can see you but yeah. So, Andy, did y'all have, do you have, you probably have something over your front door as well. We do. We are, we're adjacent to City Hall. And so, although the library does not have any video cameras attached to that, the City Hall building does. And so, one of those cameras does, in fact, um, it, it, you can watch the 
the lockers from that vantage point and the city hall cameras do directly feed into PD. But um, when we first unveiled this and we were kind of beta testing it to see, you know, what to expect, is this going to work? Um, there was, there's been absolutely no vandalism. No one has tried to get into the, that, the locks. Uh, we we really have not had any issues whatsoever and so when we initially started we were only using the lockers when the library was actually open because we want to you know baby steps we'll see how this initial step goes and then we'll we'll open it up then and so now we use the lockers on the weekends it's 24 7. now usage has gone down slightly so when during COVID, when the li when the library was completely closed for those ten weeks, um, our usage was about double than what it is now. So instead of having twenty people a day use the lockers as we had last April, for example, now we have about eight to ten people a day using it on average. I will say that we. We we reopened um, to the public on November 2nd, and we can, but obviously we didn't have the lockers at that point. We continued to offer door side just because people were still nervous about coming in. But at some point last spring, after the lockers were up and rolling, I had to say to staff, as of April 1, we're not going to do <laughs> that black card outside the front door. You know, we're just going to say your option is to use the lockers if you're not comfortable coming. In. And one thing I'm not, we can't do, which you probably can, Andy, is if, um, because it's tied to our ILS system to open it and to, for the patron to be able to open it, we can't, for instance, leave faxes in a locker for people to pick up or copies or printing. It's It's got to be a barcoded item and hmm. that, you know, it's, I, I, I'm sure there would probably be a way we could force it by creating a patron type or something that we could utilize it with but so far we haven't been asked to do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting but, so it's been, been mainly print or or media or whatever all it is. it's just circulating library materials at this mm -hmm. point yeah interesting so we, go ahead please well we kind of discovered quickly too um that with we have four people at the front desk and are three to four, depending on what day of the week it is. Um, I was hearing, you know, different, I, when we first started, there was some stumbling and mistakes, you know, again, this system, you have to manually enter the patron number. And at one point, one staff member had entered the same patron number five times. So when the actual patron came in, five doors open when she put her number in. <laughs> So at that point, I said, <laughs> you know, this was a huge investment. So we got to get a game plan together on how we, because I didn't want people to become frustrated and um, say, oh, this thing isn't worth even fooling with. But um, it, so we have kind of a, even though it's a paper trail, it's, it allows us to say, you know, I loaded a locker for myself on, Tuesday and there were more materials that came in with me on Wednesday so we can go back on this paper trail and confirm that um, and, and it's just a, a it's just a sheet of paper and I and I circulation kind of the adult circulation services kind of came up with a plan on their own for only one person a day to handle it you know instead of everybody doing it at once and then not being able to track the um, if there was an issue so so how often do they typically, to both of you, how often do your staff typically mess with the lockers? I mean, and like you said, do you have one person, you know, a different person every day or whatever, or a single, you know, person who's, whose responsibility it is to handle that function? You know, how have y'all divvied that up among your staff? Well, uh, we have our librarians handling that and uh, people can make the request either online by phone or by text and 
typically it takes about 15 minutes between that request coming in if we have that material on hand and getting it out to one of the lockers as long as the lockers are open and now we already you know we usually have a locker that is open when we initially set it up we had three different uh, time slots uh -huh. and each time slot lasted about two hours a day and that would give us time um, to sanitize it, to refill it, um, because all the materials we would put in a, a, a bag that is not transparent, and then we would put the materials into the locker after it had been sanitized. So we were trying to be just as careful as we could be um, in doing that. And then we also allowed such a, a large time period just to allow for latecomers to to get in because usually someone's always late and so that we figured out that that would really give us enough time to get all the things done in a in a safe and accurate way so that seemed to work out pretty pretty well for us right well because ours is is part of our ils system we when they do the pulls list first thing in the morning and then the two o'clock pulls list is is about the only times we really load those lockers unless an item comes well and i think even in the case of if somebody returns something that's now on hold for a locker they basically just hang on to it until um probably the two o'clock run would be what we do so we do it based on when our pulls list is done i see uh -huh. Interesting. Are the, if there are questions from the group, please do not hesitate to ask um, and turn your camera on if you want. Uh, Candace, I was so glad to see your face a little while ago. Uh, uh, we'd love to have everyone join us. It, it doesn't have to be just those of us who are speaking. We like to see your face no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a question, do you have a question, Candace? I do, I do. And uh, my camera is distracting me. <laughs> It's being very jumpy. I don't know if, are is it being jumpy for you guys too? It's, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. Um, so I had actually put in um, an LSTA grant to get some lockers. So I'm in the process now of like waiting to see if we're going to get them or not. Um, and so if we do, our plan is to have the um, the intelligent ones like you have, Tina. Um, but we're not going to have them at the library. The plan is to have them at some remote locations um, in order to expand library services. So would you, did you say you have one that's like at a remote location or not no? No, I, I, I would like to. This was kind of baby step one, um, but we do, we have a, we have a situation where we were looking at building or retrofitting a building in, in a fast growing corridor and that you know that costs quickly rose out of our reach and um so when when this happened i thought about doing a remote location um i would like it to be uh, it's I, I don't we're four blocks away from city hall so i don't really think it needs to be that close i think for initially, I'd like to get it somewhere that services is lim services limited at. So, but yes, I'm interested in that. You'd have Did to have staff. Go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. You'd have to have staff, uh, a staff member, transport them out to the offsite location and load them and so forth. But um, I think it'd be something that'd be very appealing to the public. Do you think um, in your experience with using them, your patrons using them, uh, the thing that I'm, I think, most worried about is if the patrons struggle and there's nobody there to help them, like, does it seem to be pretty easy for patrons to use or do they generally have any trouble? Ours have been very simple. Um, when we when we have had problems, they will, if we're open, they'll come inside. And, and a couple of times we've had to reach out to tech services for it. But um, 
with these lockers we have, there's two options. They can scan their barcode, and if they can't just get that thing lined up just right and, and make that scan, then they can go into manually um, manually checking or entering their barcode number. But I, um, Emily just had a question in the chat about the no-shows versus pickups for the lockers. I would, we have had hardly any problems with that at all. Um, so, and I think that tells me that after hours, they're able to figure it out too. It's, it's pretty simple. So, unless there's a technical glitch and that has happened, but yeah. you know, like I said, just a simple signage helped out with, you know, just here's a phone number, call us and leave a message. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Andy responded to that too. Actually, we've had very good luck with pickups with probably less than five no-shows. If there's a no-show, the library num member all has always called in or texted and rescheduled a pickup. Mm -hmm. And Tina said, we seldom have items expire. They're picked up very quickly. My problem the other day was I had something on hold and I couldn't remember what branch I had sent it to. So I was, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I think that's a great option. Uh, so when you're, so uh, Andy, let me just make sure I have this straight. When your uh, patrons are picking up their materials, they're already checked out to them, I, right? Yes, yeah. staff have already checked them out to the library members. So the, really the only thing they have to do at that point is just open up the lock, reach in, grab the bag and take it home. Uh-huh, that's good, yeah. So Candace, where are you thinking about putting uh, your lockers? Uh, the Narcusi area and a uh, reunion area so mm -hmm. far farther east and north than we currently have a branch and then way 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 west like actually right at the corner there the four corners with polk and everything in the okay. reunion so what uh what county are you in i'm sorry osceola osceola so Mike, Mike, I'm curious if, if people only in uh, more rural or uh, uh, counties are thinking about this, although I don't think, I mean, not really, that's really not the case in terms of Andy or Tina's situation. So that, you know, for someone to think, oh, well, they're, you know, they're gonna wanna do this in rural counties because you know, they may not have as many branches or they want to reach a, a certain community, but I would think in, even in urban areas that there is a need in, you know, certain loca locations that they perhaps, you know, it could be nursing home area, it could be, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I would think that this could, could fill a gap in a, a number of different ways. I think the convenience of being able to pick up those materials anytime you want to, whatever fits your schedule the best, is a very attractive option. So I'm wondering if, is, if uh, like Tina, you were saying you thought about putting um, lockers in a, a, a certain corridor that's growing in population, and that would certainly behoove you in terms of not having to build a branch right but do you then have to like i mean would you rent a whole building or would you rent like space in a in a and you know like a retail area or a business well, or something like that initially the location we had hoped to build a small branch was on um a city a piece of city property that yeah. they had built a and fire station annex and mm -hmm. and they had a big uh, a, about a 1500 2000 square foot garage i mean concrete building for lack of better words and and the fire chief said to me one day why don't you stick a little branch out here well you know <laughs> we were thinking in terms of buying an air conditioner and throwing up some sheetrock and opening that sucker and then the everybody else got involved and 
you know, engineers and so forth. So um, I think, but that building is still there. But also that in that same corridor on US 27, there is um, within five years, there's going to be a municipal center there. There's a large development on the plans. And one of the things the developer has said was he would like to have, he, she would like to have a, a municipal center where people could pay utility bills and, you know, do some business. So I, I'm, I've already raised my hand and said, we, you know, we really like to be part of that planning process when it gets closer to time. So I'm wondering too, if you, I mean, I don't know that this much about county politics, <laughs> but if you could approach, you know, like if someone's putting up a permit to develop a certain area or a certain commercial area and there was a proffer built into that agreement, what, you know, whether that might be an option too, I, I don't know, uh, you know, something that, that um, you sort of put on the, the people who want to expand a neighborhood or you know, maybe they're building a multi-use building where you've got commercial on the bottom floor and and uh, you know, condos or uh, uh, apartments above, something like that. Uh, I mean, I think about red boxes. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, do they? I'm, I'm assuming they pay something to Walmart. I'm on sure. PBS yeah. or wherever. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I will tell you, as the growth in my community continues to move farther north, there we're move, we're getting farther and farther away from those citizens as far as convenient access. Uh -huh. And Polk County is such a huge county, uh -huh. uh, square mileage wise, that to say, well, I'm going to jump in my car and drive to another community, it could take an hour to get over to Lakeland from where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So in terms of convenience and being able to continue to serve people, it, you know, these outside the box ideas are important. But yeah, I, I, um, that's a good idea, Claudia. I, you know, maybe talking to the planning department and finding out what would be the, the catch, I think, for me would be if it's a gated community and, and the general citizenry couldn't have access to it yeah. and have issues with that. But you could find alternatives. Yeah, yeah, so. I would think so too. Yeah. Um, are you the only location in Polk County that's doing? Uh, yes, um, I was going to mention that the cooperative, there's two locations that are using some of our CARES grants money to get it. The main branch at Lakeland and I think Haines City Public Library is doing them. So um, I didn't wait. I mean, at that point, who knew we were going to get CARES grant money for libraries? Um, so I we went ahead and moved forward with it. The, the Lakeland Public Library's main branch is currently closed for a year. Oh my. With, with limited access, the children's room is open, but they're having all new duct work put in and so forth. So if it gets installed um, prior to their reopening, it'll be a real boom for them yeah, to be able to sure. serve like that. So I mean, even if they reloc relocated the lockers after they use them yeah. on their location or something yeah. like that, you know, that's another option too. Um, uh, Andy, did y'all have to put your lockers from Home Depot together or, I mean, was it a DIY kind of thing? I actually, no, they arrived already put together. They were, uh, they came in on a pallet, just as you saw them in the one picture. Okay. And they had been wrapped in, you know, like the giant saran wrap. And uh, so we just basically had to get them off the pallet and unwrap them and put the lockers on them and come up with a little label, a weather resistant label for each one. So it was pretty much plug and play, which helped us start almost immediately after yeah. after they arrived. So yeah, that's that's a lot different than I assume it was for you, Tina, since, since you said you had to take all these other considerations into account and it was tied into your ILS too. Uh, did the software have any bugs at all that had to be worked out or? 
you're you're muted i'm sorry uh, you're muted i am yeah, i'm sorry um, okay. now, as far as the um th this company has had past experience with working with Cersei Dynex, so they it was it I had everything ready from my end. Our facilities department entered, you know, set up the exterior plug and the IT department had everything lined up, ready to go. So really, had it not been for their concerns over the weather, um, we probably could have gone live the day after they installed them. But yeah. there was a time frame that we had to wait to get the new awning put on but i'm glad we did that so uh -huh. it, it's a little more secure and safe so. did you all have to actually physically connect them to the cement to the you know to the pad or to the sidewalk or whatever you want to call it i think mine are uh-huh i'm pretty sure they are they sent um, an installation guy who travels all over the southeast. He was from Texas, and he put it together, put them together, and, the, and then the um, technician was here too and got everything connected and trained my staff that same day. Uh -huh. so, yeah, they provided the training on how to use the mapping and so forth. And it was healthy. Yeah, in our uh, our low tech version here, it took about. 20 minutes uh, we had the public works crew come out and they're actually quite heavy so yeah. um, <laughs> they may be plastic but they are very sturdy and um, you would have to literally hang you'd have to have two people hang on the top to actually have them topple over because uh -huh. um, I tried it I was concerned about that uh, yeah. especially going outside but just to be on the safe side, uh, Public Works did put two very long screws in at different locations on the inside when you open up the, the lockers and they screwed them into um, some of the brick on the outside and the concrete ours, on the outside ours, of the building. Ours, ours, we, ours, ours did too. We, we had, they put three by threes up and, and actually mounted them into the front of the building. I will tell you that you know we're in Florida where it's damp and nasty sometimes we have recently had a, a wasp nest in one oh, <laughs> so, and and luckily staff found it putting it in you know as they were loading it it was just the beginning of one but I guess that's something you have to consider is you know buggies and stuff getting into them since they're outdoors uh-huh oh yeah so but they're kept closed even if there's not anything in them i would assume on both counts yeah the then back, I, I could see birds and bats and <laughs> you know, all kinds of critters getting in there you never know you know <laughs> who else has questions for these lovely ladies to uh share some ideas with you So I, I, I get the impression that these this was a good investment on both counts for you all. Yes, I feel like it was. Absolutely. I mean, mine was $1,260. <laughs> great investment. That is great. That is and, great. and you know, actually one of the things that that was kind of in the back of my mind when I thought, well, let's, I don't know, let's give it a shot. Let's, let's see what happens. Um, I thought in worst case scenario, we'll just move them back inside and use them for the original purpose, yeah, which, you That's know, right. the, the staff lockers. So um, it, it served as a, actually a really good beta test. And I know, on, you know, on my, my wish list, I can put, I want some lockers like Tina P. <laughs> <laughs> with the, um, the weather like these are sealed very nicely so if we get a they're northward facing so if we get a southern blowing storm I don't worry about materials getting wet or anything are yours pretty sealed tight ours are they, they I mean there's a small vent in each one of them but there has been um, no no leaks or no damage of any kind and 
thankfully we've not had any bugs or squirrels making nests and I'm at this point so I need to knock on some wood. Yes. <laughs> and you said you put the items in bags anyway, didn't you Andy? Did you mean yes. plastic bags or? Right, we had, uh, they're non-translucent so they're like a white bag, just the typical plain white kind of plastic bag that we use for um, any any library member that is requesting a bag if they don't have one have one and we did that just to keep at, at the time try and keep everything um sanitized mm -hmm. so and this was right when covid happened so before we would uh, place the materials out there we had quarantined the items and you know, staff handling items for members were using gloves and we were all wearing masks. So we were doing whatever we could to make sure that those materials, once we put them in a bag and took them outside and sanitized the inside of that, that mm -hmm. locker, that it was all good. Now things have changed quite a bit since then, mm -hmm. but um, that's where the bag came in use. But I think it also kind of helped with privacy, any privacy concerns that we might have been thinking about in the back of our minds. Like we don't really, you know, we want to preserve our library members' privacy and their right to read or or listen to uh, whatever they, they want to borrow. So that was helpful in that way too. I will tell you funny story. Oh, Sorry. my that's okay um initially we have a lot deeper overhang right at our front door um, a much deeper porch than where we ended up mounting it and the reason was they were ordered measured ready to go and the fire chief and the fire marshal popped in one day and fire chief said to the fire marshal points to that area and that was an overhang and he said this is where Tina's lockers are going. And she said, no, because we have automatic doors that are pop out when there's an emergency. And she said, if you put those lockers that are 24, you won't be able to use the emergency door. So I was glad that she caught it and we were able to shift gears and just turn the corner there and, and put them around the corner. But it was less weatherproof there. That's why we had to add that second uh, overhang for it but yeah mm. and so we have we have a, a wall mounted um wipe dispenser by ours too that's for hand wipes so if people feel like they don't you know they want to wipe their hands off or whatever they can mm -hmm. do that it's like one that you would find in the gym oh. emily did share something too um okaloosa county has a vending machine located in one of their most far-flung communities, extremely rural, she said. And conversely, Miami-Dade has a kiosk in one of the metro stations where there's lots of commuter traffic. So that sort of, uh, you know, goes to show you what people need and, and, and where they need that material. Now, I would assume that once, if you decided to move uh, or to explore putting something up in a in a more remote area, then of course you have to build in who's going to be you know fulfilling that, who's going to be filling those lockers, um, you know what kind of insurance you might have to have for that person, or you know, I don't know. I, I'm just thinking about those kinds of things. Um, I just don't know. Anybody have anything that they would like to ask? If, if anybody's interested, I do have like my commission memo and so forth that I put together that has the vendors I, I quoted to them and I'm happy to share that information. Um, it's my, Claudia's got my email address, so um, it, I'm happy to help and and if I had thought of what Andy did, I could have saved the city of Lake Wales about twenty thousand dollars. But 
that's oh, okay. Yeah. Totally different. So um, that's always been my luck with investments: buy high, sell low. So. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to mention too that don't forget that we are going to have ARPA monies, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act monies uh, for our for grants available. We hope um, in early to mid July. Uh, and this is a project. These are projects that you know are certainly worth putting forward to. Uh, as an application to the ARPA, uh, to the grants folks. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I encourage you to think about those kinds of things and anything else that would apply to the monies that are going to be available. Um, it's a little bit different from the uh, CARES Act money that was available, um, but still, you know, same sorts of things, you know, reaching your community, um addressing health issues and so on i can't remember everything that was in the description but that all that information will be pushed out to everyone just as soon as it is um, ready anybody have anything else Well, I want to thank everyone for coming and especially want to thank Tina and Andy for sharing your experiences with us. And Candace, thank you for uh, exploring your questions with us. Um, just want to remind you that we will be having a recording placed in our BLD uh, YouTube channel. So, and that would probably be in the next day or so, or maybe even today, probably tomorrow. Um, if you have a topic that you'd like to discuss, please share it with me or with uh, any any other uh, BLD uh, staff member. We'd love to hear your ideas. Um, and our next DLIS discussion is on July 19th at three o'clock Eastern time. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing what that topic will be in our BLD newsletter, Building Success so and also sharing it on social media um oh and emily would like me to please remind uh the municipal directors who may be on the call that uh, which she is going to be hosting a call for these folks next week um tana shared that the international library services is the group that uh they purchased the lockers from but they also you worked with envision wear um, but they required indoor installation. And then she gives a number and a name for somebody with international library. Um, Emily said next Tuesday is a municipal director's call at 11 a.m. Eastern uh, daylight time. And I don't know what that means, but okay. Anyway, it's great to see all of you and I hope to see you again next month and Eventually, we will all be able to see each other. We will be able to travel and things will be maybe not normal, but very close. So y'all stay healthy, stay safe, and thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>